Hello guys and welcome back. In the uh, previous video, uh, we were here uh, in the gazebo environment and we were about to assemble the vehicle in the gazebo environment. Uh, so in this video, I will do that and I will finalize everything. So I advise you to watch this video to the end. And as usual, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification button to stay updated. So let's start. Okay, so uh, we were about to create the joints between the wheels and the chassis of the vehicle to make it a fully functional model. Now, uh, in order to do that, in this bar right here, you will have this button. You can uh, select it. And here you will, uh, you will have this window in here. Okay, so first thing you need to specify the type of the joint. Uh, you have multiple types. Feel free to choose whichever you want. In this case, obviously, the right one will be the revolute since uh, the wheel will rotate uh, with respect to the chassis. Now, uh, for uh, the uh, apparent, let me expand it a bit. Okay, so this is this word should be parent. Um, uh, the parent link actually of the joint will be the part that uh, is fixed, okay? So in this case, it will be the chassis. And uh, the child part in here will be the wheel, which is the part that will move uh, with respect to this joint. So uh, just to recap, the parent is the fixed part and the child is the moving part of the joint. Now here you will need to specify the joint axis and this will be the axis uh, or the unit vector more specifically around which the action uh, on this joint will take place. Now you can specify it as a combination of X, Y and Z coordinates and uh, actually just to make sure what you have selected, uh, there's a ring, there's a circular ring in here. Let me, let's say, make it clearer a bit. Okay, again, dot to press enter. Uh, otherwise, it will reset all the values. So this is the ring right here, uh, as you have noticed. And in this case, I need uh, the unit uh, vector to be uh, along the X axis, okay? So because it will rotate like this. Also, you will have the option to uh, place uh, the links with respect to each other, for example, along the x-axis. Uh, the x-axis actually is the red uh, line. You can place it as the at the minimum position, at the max, and the at the middle, at uh, the uh, maximum position with respect to the chassis, and you can use the reverse option. Okay. So these options are uh, provided there uh, just to allow you to uh, specify the relative position of the wheel with respect to the chassis. And uh, let's say in uh, a certain typical manner, you don't have much flexibility in here. Now you will have two things in the position. You will have the joint pause, and this is actually the position of the axis that you can see right here of the child part with respect to the uh, child part uh, frame, okay? Uh, so uh, in this case, I uh, need to place uh, these axes uh, and actually one of them will be uh, the, uh, the axis of action. Uh, I need to place them at the center of my part, my child part, which is the wheel. So in order to do so, I will keep the values in here, the coordinates, uh, zero. All of them need to be zero uh, and I will obtain this result. Okay, and pretty much every time this will be the case. Now for the other position, this actually will specify the position of your child part uh, with respect to the parent part, which is the chassis in this case. Now, uh, based on the measurements that I uh, 
I took in SolidWorks uh, during the design phase of my uh, of my vehicle. Uh, I have obtained these numbers, and these are not random numbers. These are uh, calculated numbers based on my design, as I told you earlier. Now, along the x-axis, you need to uh, use the following number, 0 0.75 meters. All right. Along the y-axis, the green one, it will be in the negative direction, 1.15 meters. And along the z-axis, it will be zero. And this will be actually the position of the center of the wheel with respect to the center of the vehicle. And actually, all of these numbers will be used uh, for the four wheels, but actually, I will change the signs based on uh, the position of the wheel, uh, if it is on the left, on the right, uh, it is a rear wheel or front wheel or stuff like that. Now make sure to hit create and this revoluted joint will be created and the wheel is placed correctly. Now if you want to uh, include all the other wheels you can uh, select your wheel and press ctrl C and then ctrl V and place it. Now I will use ctrl V again and ctrl V for the final time. Now the same process will be repeated for all the wheels. So let me create the joint. In this case, it will be uh, along the X axis 0 0.75. Again, don't hit, don't hit enter. It will be 1.15 and it will be zero and create. It will be minus 0 0.75, one point, actually minus 1.15, it's in the negative direction, and finally it is zero. The position as minus 0 0.75, and 1.15, and zero. So now we have uh, a full model and this should be functional. So let me save it by pressing Ctrl S. Here you can uh, specify any directory that you want. Uh, I will keep it in the default directory. Uh, or you know what, let me save it on the desktop. So here we go. Okay. I will call it my car and save. Now let me exit the model editor using Ctrl X. Yes, exit. Let me show you on the desktop what we have just saved. This is actually the directory that I have saved. If you enter it, you will see that you have a model.sdf and this is actually the code that defines my model and later on we will not go we will not work with the GUI to define our model we will work with uh, the XML markup language to define our model but for now we will uh, use the GUI and this is the model configuration these two files will define my model let me go back to here now this is my car and let me drag this panel right here and let me select my model and let me specify a certain desired velocity um, so apparently I didn't name the joints I think I have the ability to name the joints so let me edit the model All right, and let me go to these joints and open the joint inspector by right clicking on it. And here I can change its name. I forgot to do that, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so this is the front uh, left. And okay. And this one in here, 
will be the front right okay I just need to name those just to distinguish them so let me save again make sure to browse to the directory where you have saved your file initially to override the previously saved file yes okay so now exit now if I select the model I can specify the velocity for the front left to be let's say 10 or let me make it 6 meters per second and for the front right let me make sure it's 6 also to avoid uh, uh, any uh, let's say turning or some, something like that these numbers should be the same so that the car can move in a straight uh, manner so let me see okay so let me now press the play button as you can see the car will adjust move I don't know if you have noticed but uh, apparently the error that I have uh, done uh, while positioning the chassis of the vehicle along the z-axis didn't affect the performance of the vehicle because of the correct definition of the joints uh, the uh, the uh, let's say uh, the bug if you want uh, appeared only at the beginning of the simulation but I mean if you uh, followed my instructions and corrected this uh, error you will not face such thing now uh, let me go back to the model editor and this time I uh, I want to add a plugin to my model and in order to do so you need to uh, press the add button under the model plugins obviously now you will uh, have this window and actually here you can place the plugin name and here you can place the uh, the file name and actually this will be the name of the shared object library for this plugin now let me explain what I have just said. Now the plugins are actually the elements of the gazebo simulator that will allow you to uh, make uh, your simulation alive, let's say, uh, to control all the aspects of your simulation. Let's say if you want to move a wheel, okay? So this can be done using a plugin. Or you want to create a communication between a sensor and an actuator let's say i i want to place a leader sensor on top of the vehicle and i wanted to communicate with the wheels of this vehicle so that if uh, the car approaches a certain obstacle it will tell the wheels to turn right or left to avoid this obstacle so all of this is done using a plugin and actually a plugin is a subroutine or a piece of code written in c plus plus and of course it needs to be built or if you want compiled in a way and once it is built uh, this will give birth to what we call a shared object library or .so file and this is what should be included in here uh, but don't worry about it for now I will uh, dedicate uh, a specific video just for plugins and I will show you how to write it uh, using the C++ language and how to build it and everything. Uh, in this window you can enter let's say some parameters to be specified for a certain plugin because some plugins need some parameters but uh, if, if it doesn't then you will leave it simply empty. Now this is the way to include a plugin using the GUI but I will show you later on as I said how to include it in the code of your model. Now I have a certain note, let me close Gazebo. I have a certain row, a note uh, regarding the plugins. Actually, if you go to your terminal, you can uh, go to, you can go and open this file in here. And I will include this path in the description down below. 
let me paste it and let me open it with a G edit. Actually, uh, this file in here will show you uh, the uh, the environment variables of the gazebo uh, software that you have installed. And these variables actually contain some paths. Uh, for example, if you focus on the gazebo plugin path, this actually will show you the path uh, where the built-in uh, plugins are inserted because yes, you have uh, downloaded actually uh, shared object libraries for plugins uh, and these are, were written by uh, developers uh, and they, they are ready to be used uh, inside the gazebo and this is the path for them actually and here you will have a variable called gazebo plugin path and this actually will detect all the plugins that you build yourself on your own you write and build on your own inside the system they will be automatically included in here and appended to this environment variable uh, now let me focus first on uh, this part in here this path let me copy it and exit now let me go to the terminal and let me go to this path okay and let me list the components as you can see you have a lot of uh, .so files or shared object libraries uh, for different types of plugins and of course, uh, just one note, uh, when you insert a certain uh, plugin library uh, from the GUI, uh, as I uh, showed you in a moment, um, uh, you need to make sure that the correspondence sensor on which this uh, plugin should act should be there in your uh, gazebo simulator, okay? So for example, the lib camera plugin, obviously it will need uh, a camera to be present inside your um, environment and of course a camera is already there you can include it from the model database as i showed you in a previous video if you remember uh, and you can you have a multitude of other uh, plugins and i will show you in later videos how to create uh, plugins on your own now uh, this is it for this video guys i hope you liked it now in the next video, I will go over the build editor and I hope to see you guys later on.